your presence i acknowledge your presence uh thank you well now i'm going to hand over the meeting to this one person who will take us through the whole session this person is somebody who i knew first as a student and now i know her in the capacity of a toast master i have seen her creativity maybe in the setting in the classroom setting but now with her team and with the way she has gone about with the meeting or she has uh, planned the role trust me she is there she is really creative fellow toast masters put your hands together for the toast master of the day toast master tanvi nair thank you so much toast master anthony i would request all of you to bear with me for a few minutes because i have a short song prepared for y'all all hail to the kings and the queens i'll take on the throne but i'm only 16 the duke and the earl with the crown made of pearls but even they know the art to the seal all this royalty seems like a luxury but there's no loyalty this nobility have no humanity i always believe they are good for nothing i welcome each one and each one of you to the royal session of the joint affiliation between the vasco and the anaphone toastmasters i your humble royal servant will be introducing the theme for today presenting to you your royal highnesses what is the first thing that comes to our mind when we hear the word royal can anyone just brainstorm about this any word that comes to your mind when you think about the word royal prince harry and meghan markle okay okay the people kingdoms yes true kingdoms palaces luxury gold but is yes true gold oh gold yes but do you think is that all to royalty you know the darkest odor are usually masked by the most fragrant perfumes way back in those times the society was all based on the division of classes hierarchy of power ageism sexism casteism and etc every noble's hand was stained with blood breaching the code of conduct and disrespecting the law was a day to day activity for them the power let the people dance to the tunes of arrogance for all those who thought this is all about royalty and luxury well you're partly correct about it but this is much more than that for those who call themselves today as the nobles of the high society beware for those who abuse power as a tool of destruction i have a team of royals who believe in justice and peace without further ado i would like to introduce to you the four important eyes of every toastmasters meeting one the one who holds power over time the one who hears the spoken language the seeker of the oohs and the ahs and finally the ultimatum the judge of all the one who holds power over time she moves with the stealth of tiger and her speed is insane her sword chops the force of wind and let me proclaim the ninja queen time for time for today toastmaster shivani kedi toastmaster shivani over to you thank you so much toastmaster of the day toastmaster tanvi well i believe that time management is an important part of self discipline and self discipline is an important part of being a queen especially for me because i am a ninja queen i have to be very quick with time 
Thanks for today's meeting. I will help you in many days time. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Shivani. Oh. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes. Were you saying something? Yeah, I'll just show my cards. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I thought you were back. For prepared speeches, I will show green card on five minutes, yellow card on six minutes, and red card on seven minutes. For table topics, I will show green card on one minute, on one and a half minute yellow card, and red card on two minutes. For evaluations, it's green card on two minutes, yellow card in two and a half, and red card on three minutes. I will give my report when called out by the general evaluator. Over to you. Thank you so much, Master Shivani, and I'm so sorry for interrupting you earlier. Now, the one who hears the spoken language, she wears a crown built from her spine of inner strength and modesty, with sparkling jewels to represent each of her quality. Applause to the powerful and the fearless, Her Highness Toastmaster Usha Jaiswa. Who is also the accounter for today? Over to you, Toastmaster Usha. Thank you, Toastmaster Sunny. Uh, good evening, everyone. And today I have taken the role of our counter. The purpose of our counter is to know words and sounds that are used as crutch or for speech by anyone who speaks. And during this meeting, I'll be listening for words uh, including and, well, but, to, and you know. I will also listen for filler sounds, including a, uh, um, and a. Uh. And I will also note when the speaker repeats the words or phrases, such as I, I, this means this means. And at the end of the meeting, I will present my report when once called upon by the general evaluator. Thank you. Over to you, Toastmaster Tanvi. Thanks so much, Toastmaster Usha. The one, the seeker of the oohs and the ahs. You are powerful, brave, and beautiful. You know what you want, and you know how to get it. With confidence, you stride across the room, straight gait, based on hands, you command those around you. I introduce you to our grammarian for today, Toastmaster Jayanti. Toastmaster Jayanti, over to you. Toastmaster of the day, Tanvi, and fellow Toastmasters. As a grammarian, it is my responsibility to place close attention to all speakers, listening carefully to their language usage. I will take note of any improper language, as well as any outstanding words, quotations, sayings, or phrases being spoken. It is also my responsibility as a grammarian to introduce the word of the day. For today's meeting, the word of the day is stately, S-T-A-T-E-L-Y. It is an adjective and it means something that is impressive or grand in size, appearance or manner. For example, we could use it as a stately 19th century mansion. It can also be used to describe people each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the day. I will give the grammarian's report when called upon during the meeting and also report on the usage of the word of the day. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Jayanti. Finally, the ultimatum, the judge of all. To be truly devoted to one's interest is to be truly loyal royal. A ruler to a kingdom where every official every bureaucrat would only be a Toastmaster. A nobleman whose only aim is the best of integrity, responsibility, service, and intelligence in governance. Behold the arrival of our general evaluator for today, Toastmaster Colin. Toastmaster Colin, over to you. Yes. All right. Uh, what shall we say? Our Excellency, Toastmaster Tanvi, Thank you for that. Uh, to describe my role as the general evaluator for today, my role is to look into everything that started right from the first point of the meeting 
in fact even maybe before that when the agenda was released i like to look at it that way right to the time when i give my report at the end so i'll be look i will be inviting also the evaluators the speech evaluators to give their reports at the end i will be inviting all the the accountant the timer and the grammarian to give their reports and finally i will have my say so i will be i will also i would also like to just make a note that uh, every speaker is given a 30 minute grace time 30 second grace time so it's 5 to 7 minutes and 30 second grace time just for the students so and uh, with that i'd like to hand over to toastmaster kaul thank you so much toastmaster kaul the most important ability of a ruler no matter what is to be able to convince their people through mere words it is now time for the prepared speech session transparency strengthens the bonds and trusts be it be in any setting even that of a ruler and a subject a noble who is sophisticated yet very humble a ruler who would surely root for and support transparency among its people i would like to welcome toastmaster anthony toastmaster anthony over to you yes yes uh, i would like to request the evaluator toastmaster ragunanda to please come ahead and read his speech objectives thank you very much toastmaster abde her highness toastmaster abde today toastmaster anthony is attempting his project from pathway presentation mastery level 3 project 3 and the project is prepare for an interview the purpose of this project is for the member to practice a skill needed for for uh, needed to present himself or herself well in an interview we are going to witness one of the best project from pathways an interview here itself thank you all the best toastmaster anthony go to toastmaster after that yes Toastmaster Anthony, an interview for president at Club XCOM. So sorry. I'm so sorry for the disturbance. Toastmaster Anthony, an interview for president at Club XCOM, an interview for president at Club XCOM. Toastmaster Anthony. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster Tanvi, Your Highness, uh, Toastmaster Tanvi. Uh, just to give a brief idea, uh, timer before you begin. This is going to be an interview. I will be the interviewer, and I am currently interviewing uh, Toastmaster Anthony for the role of the president at a new club called the French Toastmasters Club in Goa. Okay, timer. You can start now. Good evening, Toastmaster Anthony. How are you doing? Good evening, Toastmaster Nigel. I'm doing well. Thank you so much. How about you? All fine. Thank you so much, uh, Anthony. I see that you have applied for the role of the president at the French Toastmasters Club. I understand that it is a prospective club that is going to convert into a club soon enough. I'd like to know first and foremost what is your association with the language French, and why do you think we need a French Toastmasters Club in Goa? Well, thank you, Toastmaster Nigel, for that question. And I think uh, this question is quite important because the whole purpose of being the president, or rather, nominating myself to be the president of this new club, which is a French Toastmasters Club, is that being a French professor myself, I have been with the language, been with the culture, been with the people who explore this community a lot, uh, right from my student life, wherein. i studied french later at the college level when i had the opportunity to go to france what i really witnessed is this peculiarity of not just the language but the culture they when you when you speak about the french people they it's not just the philosophies you know which are which are quite valid till date but it's also the camaraderie that they bring and what i see is 
we have a lot of French speakers in Goa, in India itself. Now we had a couple of uh, pockets of India which were francophone, right from uh, uh, you know Pondicherry, uh, Karikal, Mahe, and hence that became a place where people would go to if they really wanted to experience France and French. But what I want to do with the club, with a French club in Goa, uh, is to make it like a cultural hub, wherein it's not just people who can speak French, but rather people who would uh, who would really want to know. It would be like a cradle of what French would be. And hence, uh, I feel strongly associated with this project. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, yes, I think uh, when you put it that way, there does seem a place or an avenue for a French Toastmasters Club in Goa. I also see from your work that you have a very impressive CV when it comes to having uh, shepherd the Vasco Toastmasters Club this past year. It's really impressive as the charter president. I'd like to know what you felt some of the challenges were at the club and also how you feel those learnings will help you as the president of French Toastmasters Club. Thank you, Toastmaster Nigel, for, for noticing that because that has been one of a uh, significant uh, you know, step or uh, a decision that, that actually changed my viewpoint. In chartering the Vasco Toastmasters Club, definitely it wasn't easy. Uh, there were a lot of challenges, majorly, let's say, getting people together. But what really helped me or how I rather overcame these challenges was creating a core team. And I learned this from the then uh, then area director, uh, Toastmasters Yona, who is now the division director. We I think we kind of came down to creating a core team and then working together. So my learnings have been that if one person wants to do everything, probably it may take a lot of time and it may be very difficult. But if you have a team with similar mindsets and aligned goals, it definitely helps one to achieve whatever one wants to. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Anthony, moving slightly away from uh, the president's uh, role in particular, I'm really intrigued to understand your idea. Uh, I've seen that uh, I, you mentioned that you've been to France, right? And I think a lot of us know that the Mona Lisa is one of the most famous paintings in the world. I've seen it uh, on uh, TV and I've seen it on popular media. I'm not too convinced that the Mona Lisa is deserves the stature that it has in the art world. On the contrary, I think Toastmaster Vinay's paintings, DTM Vinay, is much more interesting than the Mona Lisa. So I'd like to know from your side, why do you think that the Mona Lisa has that stature in the art world as one of the most famous paintings and your own thoughts about it? I think it, you, you rightly said it because there are so many paintings that even I feel that they don't deserve to be in the museum. But what I have learned over a period of time is that the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Every artwork speaks to the viewer and to the one who interacts with it. A few years back when we had, let's say, the impressionists, people thought it was just dots on the canvas. But definitely it, it, became, it became a celebrated form of art. Now, be it Mona Lisa or be it any local artist, Definitely everybody deserves a place. And one gets that only when one can connect. Speak of anything. In the whole Toastmaster setting, we have people who give wonderful speeches. But let's see if that topic is really delivered exceptionally, but it, it, it does not connect with you, you will not be convinced whatsoever. So I think it's about making that impression of rather, uh, you know, having it speak to its audience is what makes all the difference. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Anthony, since you've been to France and you've also uh, been going car at heart, uh, do you see any cultural similarities between the two or differences? And do you see some of that being played out in the Toastmasters Club, in running it, so on and so forth? Definitely, if you take it as a separate unit, definitely there are differences. But because of globalization and because of you know global connectivity, we have come to this stage where you have, uh, you know, a corporate acceptance of a certain kind of behavior. And that is also what I've noticed when I've gone to various Toastmaster meetings, uh, virtually, let's say. So 
we have devised that kind of a stage uh, that kind of uh, uh, you know that kind of behaviors okay and at the same time one needs to understand that uh, if you are on a at a you know on a platform which has common goals then i think it's easier to connect so yes okay okay thank you uh, anthony and lastly if there was one thing that you could tell all of us in french uh you know that is your say your favorite saying or a favorite art of quote what would it be and what does it mean my favorite quote is by voltaire when he says il faut arroser notre jardin that means one must keep working and doing what one does and you will bear fruits thank you perfect perfect thank you so much anthony and all the best with your role as the president of french toastmasters club over to you toastmaster of the day thank you so much toastmaster nigel and toastmaster anthony now we will have a one minute silence for feedback time to please let us know at the end of one minute The one minute is up. This one, sir. He is the Dionysius of the Greek mythology. He is fun and loved by all. The Sheikh of the Sands, known for his strange abilities of connecting people together and his craze for raw omelette. Let the drums roll. Welcome our second speaker for today, distinguished Toastmaster Raymond Pereira. Toastmaster Raymond, over to you. The oh. guy who evaluates me. Yes. Or the lady who evaluates. Also, uh, Toastmaster Meenal, I would like to call upon you to read out his speech objectives. Hi, thank you, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Tanvi. Our spe second speaker for today is Toastmaster Distinguished Raymond Pereira, and uh, he's speaking on Level Three, Project One of Engaging Humor Pathway, Understanding Vocal Variety. The purpose of his speech is to practice using vocal variety to enhance a speech. The time slot is five to seven minutes, and the Title is very interesting. It says, "Be like Raju." So, over to you, Toastmaster Raymond. Wish you all the best. Yeah, ma'am. I know. I know. I can open this bottle. What? You think Raju can open better? No, no, no. Let me show you. There. I open the bottle. You don't have to compare me to Raju all the time, even for water. Now you're upset. Let me tell these people what you're doing to me for the last 42 years of my life. Have you guys been ever compared to your sister, brother, cousin, neighbor's son, neighbor's son's brother, sister, their boyfriend. Yeah, I go through that even before I was born. You know, my mother, yeah, yeah I'm talking about you. Yeah. She and her sister are very competitive. They compete over everything. The first thing happened was my aunt, her sister, got married first. 
So my mom was upset. And she said, I need to get married soon. So she did get married. But the problem was, Raju, my cousin brother, was born first. So she ate my dad's head and voila, this royalty was born. But it didn't end there. Everything in life became a competition. Let's start with the beginning. I was studying. Raju dropped out. My mom said, be like Raju, drop out. What? I don't want to drop out. I want to be a doctor. So she went and checked with my aunt. My son is going to be a doctor. Raju said, I'm going to be a tailor. What? See, the doctor wears the measuring tape. Oh, sorry, the tailor wears the measuring tape. The doctor wears the stethoscope. It looks the same. She's like, no, he's making money now because he left his studies and he's stitching men's clothes. Ray, nothing doing. You are going to join tailoring and learn how to stitch women's clothes. So yes, my unfortunate thing is I can stitch women's clothes. And I'm telling you the truth. It's just that I didn't put it on my CV. I can stitch women's clothes. The problem with women's clothes is that when they are getting married, they give you a huge order. I want to stitch clothes for the bridesmaid. I want to stitch for the, the maid, everybody, all the aunties and uncles and everybody. And I was not making money. He was making money. So Raju won, Ray zero. Then Raju got married. I still didn't find a girlfriend. Ray, go to the nearest shop or uh, college or anywhere and find a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That incident, I'm telling her, I'm telling them about it. I got married. Raju had two kids. I had three. I defeated him. I had a daughter, a parrot, and a cat. Raju still had two kids. So Raju won, Ray won. It didn't end there. I became DTM. Mom, I am DTM. She went and told Raju's mom, Ray is a DTM. Raju said, I am also a DTM. So mom came to me and said, Raju is a DTM. Yeah, really? Which club? So I asked him, what is the meaning of DTM? Distinguished toast maker. I'm a pastry chef. And I'm earning $5,000 a month. How much are you earning? Uh, Mom, I have to pay my membership fees for to Nigel. Otherwise, I will lose my membership. So I'm only paying in Toastmasters. I'm not earning anything. All my workshops are for free. Even Colin will agree to that. So we're not making money. So Raju, two, Ray, one. So life was tough. Everything became about Raju. Do you all face something similar? Tanvi, Nigel, Meenal, compared to somebody or another, so this is my life. Now in COVID situation, Raju's at home, I'm stuck in Kuwait. My mama says, why can't you be like Raju and come to India? He's in India, I'm in Kuwait, what can I do? I don't know, Raju somehow took the nearest ship and he came down while you and all of us are sitting over here and struggling with this hot sun while Raju is enjoying, uh, enjoying the cyclonic winds and the rain which just happened and he's fishing. Raju three, Ray one. But everything that happens in my life is all about Raju. Now the question I asked myself, should I give up and become Raju? Mom also said his name, R-A-J-U is four characters and yours is R-A-Y, three characters. Raju, five, Ray, one. Come on, mom. I should win in something, at least something. She said, yes, you did. You won in not making any money 
you won in not having two kids, you won in so many things that Raju can, has done better than you. And how is that a winner? She said, end of the day, even if you're not like Raju, you are still my son. But if you can, a little bit, little, to be like Raju. One more time you say Raju, you know what? I will say, uh, let's be like Nigel. You know Nigel, that guy? The glasses, that fellow, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this guy, yeah, this fellow. Yeah. So friends, little bit if you can to stop the nagging, be like your neighbor, son, daughter, brother, cousin, auntie, gardener, whoever you can, little bit, it will stop the nagging. I managed to open this bottle. She's quiet. She's not happy that I'm talking to you, but I will try to be little like Raju. Cheers and over to you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Raymond. Now we will have a one minute silence for feedback. Time of one, uh, only one minute to go. Yes, thank you. Now we will have the voting for the best speaker. Can we have the voting poll? So master. Yes. Toastmaster Tanvi, it's done. Okay. Thank you so much. The crest on his armor is that of an abstract paintbrush. His touch colors the very mountains as the most loveliest of flowers. The very essence of the creative is its novelty, and hence we have no standard by which to judge it. An artist, a Da Vinci who cannot fail. Please allow me to welcome Toastmaster Nigel, along with the ruler who supports transparency, Toastmaster Anthony. Over to y'all. Thank you. Uh, before I start, I would request the timer that uh, can you indicate the timings through the chat or maybe on my WhatsApp because I would be sharing my screen. I may not be able to see the uh, screen. Yes, well, thank you. Can you confirm if you can see my screen? Yes, Anthony, you can see yes. your screen. Thank you. With a 10 minute slot, I will be speaking to you about the club officer elections, which is uh, which affects all the members who are present here, uh, be it from Anafont or be it from uh, Vasco Toastmasters Club. Now, it's a 10 minute slot. I may speak for let's say five or six minutes. We will then take questions. When I say we, I'm speaking also about Toastmaster Nigel, who will help me in answering the questions. 
to start with i will be speaking a little bit about especially for the new toastmasters the uh, what the organigram of ti is the timelines that one needs to keep in mind the frequency of offices a little bit about the club office elections and the questions at the end that we will take so let us start with the organigram or the organizational chart now when i joined first i i was told yes anthony you are part of area let's say uh, w2 but then i and then somebody told me that the division is w and i really didn't know what is what i didn't know if area was after division or division was after area of district was before division and i and i'm sure this confusion when you hear these terms you may be confused as well especially the new role players for the ones who know it it's like a refresher course and to put it in perspective i would like to show you that we start with clubs you have clubs at the heart of it many clubs will make let's say an area for example you have vasco and anafont which uh, you know the part of area w2 so w2 is an area that means there is area 1 somewhere there is area 3 4 when you have multiple areas coming together you have something called as the division and that's what we are part of we are part of division w then you go a little higher you must have heard of district district is what is made up of divisions so you have division a b c d i mean we are w so think about how many divisions before us so understand we are a club as members we are part of club but also part of area division district we are also part of the region so we have many districts forming regions all over the world globally we have we have 13 regions now these regions sometimes uh, are across different countries as well and these regions are taken care of by the board of directors so there are elections at each and every level but what i'm interested in telling you about today is the club level the center of it how do we run that and why do we need you today to listen to this presentation and understand what the role is before i go ahead a little bit about it if you see this is the world map which was which was uh, put up at uh, on the website in 2020 you can see the number of regions which are there you have region 1 to 9 if you see india is in uh, yellow so we are region uh, 13 okay if you go this is region 13 so that means india is part uh, of you know shares rather the region with nepal bhutan bangladesh myanmar laos thailand cambodia uh, uh, vietnam sorry cambodia yes and uh, uh, malaysia and sri lanka singapore as well so if you if you actually see i also spoke to you about districts if you see the number here we are part of district 98 which means there are other districts also so every time you have events and competitions all that it goes from club to area area to division division to district this is what it is all about so we need to remember at the moment we are part of region 13 district 98 next next year we uh, district 98 will be further bifurcated why i'm telling you all this is because as even a member one needs to know what the organizational chart is and now that you know about this i would like you to remember two timelines i have always been confused i have been confused till the last uh, i think last maybe day before yesterday one is to remember there are there are two cycles one is the renewal cycle renewal cycle is for your dues when you need to pay money for your membership now it happens from 1st april to 30th september is your one cycle your second cycle is from 1st october to 31st march so this is only for money majorly your dues that you need to pay which which goes to ti international through your club but the other thing that one needs to remember is the toastmaster year how you have the annual year financial year the toastmaster year starts on 1st july ends on 30th june which means we are in may next month the toastmaster year is ending toastmaster year is ending most of our roles most of our terms of leaders will end and the new uh, leaders will take over so remember these are two different things yes they coincide sometimes both the excom sometimes coincide with the renewal cycle but one needs to remember this Now, again what why toastmaster year because during this toastmaster year you will have the contest or any programs which are planned by 
the district, the division, area, uh, region, or generally the Toastmaster International as a whole. Two timelines, remember them well. Focus on Toastmaster year, because this is what I'm going to talk to you about. Now, when we speak about Toastmaster year, that means there are people taking care of it, not taking care of that whole year. And that at club level, you have the leaders who are taking it, your XCOM executive committee. Now, Toastmaster has arrangements for two possibilities. The frequency of a club office, you can have an annual office or a semi-annual one. Most of the clubs, at least as far as I know, have annual. Vasco Toastmasters Club, Ana Fonte has annual system, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but many others have semi-annual, which means the leaders, the presidents, VP heads, and all those will hold office from 1st July to 30th June. If, it, if at all it was a half yearly thing, that the six month term, then it would be 1st July to 31st, and then 1st to 31st, that means you would have elections again. So forget uh, semi-annual uh, at the moment, just look at annual. Since we are finishing term, as a president, since I'm finishing the, uh, my term and my XCOM, same thing with uh, Toastmaster Nigel and his XCOM at Anafont, we are now looking at new leaders for the club who will take the club forward. And what are those roles? Let me talk to you. Let me talk about it to you. These are some of, not some actually, they are rather all the club officers. You have the president. Now, the president is someone who would lead and organize, overlook all the functioning of, uh, of the club. He, he or she would be responsible uh, for, for every member and how, it, and how the club is propelled into the, uh, in, in what direction based on the uh, objectives of each member. President is also somebody who is the point of contact for the whole club. And whenever, let's say, the area or uh, division has to contact, the president uh, is someone they would go to. Next is VP Ed. Now, VP Ed is, as you can see, you have education in it, which means that VP Ed is someone who will ensure that the education program of TI is going on. Uh, I'm sure Anna Font has a, a wonderful uh, VP Ed, that is uh, Tanvi. And we at uh, Vasco also have Toastmaster Vishal who ensures that you know they, he, he keeps an eye on the progress of every member, discusses what the objectives are. So VP education is also a very significant role. You really get to learn a lot through this role. VP membership is somebody who brings Toastmasters to the non-Toastmasters. That's one. But VP membership uh, is also who, somebody, who is somebody who renews the you know, the, the memberships, definitely, but also the objectives and the motivation of the members who are there. VPPR, on the other hand, like, is, is someone who would network with, with, uh, with members, or not, sorry, with uh, the non-Toastmaster members, but at the same time organize and, and uh, manage campaigns which are led by area, division, district, or even TI through various uh, committees. Next, we have treasurer, who is quite uh, significant when it comes to maintaining the finances of a club. Since it's a non-profit organization, there needs to be transparency. And treasurer is somebody who holds that, who holds the office. Secretary, on the other hand, is someone who also has, uh, who maintains records, but also uh, writes the meetings and most of the paperwork of a new member and everything is with secretary. So secretary again is somebody who is um, very important in the whole office. A secretary also has certain other, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, so certain other uh, duties that that he or she has to follow. Sergeant at arms, if it was a regular meeting is responsible for ensuring that the meeting is, uh, if, if the hall is booked or everything is set up in an online, uh, in an online setup as well, helps, let's say the VP ed or when the meeting starts and uh, ensuring that everything goes on time. So these are seven uh, club offices that, that exist. 
now i will be sharing this document with you wherein i have hyperlinked all the rules in detail so you can go through it and i would request to nominate yourselves for for these roles if it's just one person um i think the club will take a call out to go about with it but if at all we have multiple nominations for a single role there would be uh, elections for it i would request you uh, if anybody wants to know about uh, what a president's role is from anafond get in touch with osmas nigel from vasco get in touch with uh, me if it's vice president get in touch with toastmaster uh, vice president education sorry toastmaster tanvi um if it's vasco toastmaster vishal toastmaster marela who is vp membership toastmaster abrar again vp membership but from vasco vp pr uh, dtm raymond and toastmaster minal from either clubs uh, toastmaster larina toastmaster eden and for secretary treasurer mayur toastmaster mayur toastmaster gopal krishna and sa we have uh, toastmaster renu and toastmaster varun get in touch you already know them because they are from your clubs uh the elections for vasco will be having it in june the date will be uh, announced shortly if you want to nominate yourselves please uh, express it to either your president or your vp ed any questions let's take some questions uh to smash nigel you can help me yes sure uh, before we start with questions i just wanted to clarify one thing for all of you uh, anthony first and foremost very uh, aptly put together the entire presentation it gave an entire idea of the excom rules one thing with regard to the semi annual and the annual membership uh, not a membership the semi annual and the annual uh, uh, excom terms is that if you have a semi annual term that means you need to have four club meetings every month okay currently all our clubs in goa have two club meetings per month and that is why we have a full uh, or an annual term okay so that's just something that i wanted to put out but apart from that if you have questions go for it any questions well even if you have later you can uh, send it to us or put it in the chat and we will take care of it yes with that i thank you all for listening to me and i will share the document with you shortly over to you those master of the day thank you so much those master anthony how true is it that a lion lives in the heart of every brave man in the world where everyone wants to eat but no one wills to hunt is a powerful ruler whose courage and pride know no bounds with a golden lion encrusted in his heart allow me to introduce to you the toast uh, table topic speaker for today t t uh, pm uh, swayam who is also a member of the royal arms of courage toast master swayam over to you please start the battle of the royals over to you thank you toastmaster tanvi good evening fellow toastmasters and my dear guests i welcome you to the most awaited most interesting part of the toastmasters meeting welcome to the table topic session table topics are long long standing tradition of toastmasters meeting intended to help members develop their uh, ability to think quickly and respond to a impromptu question or a topic i will call upon a a member or a guest or they can volunteer themselves and give them a topic to speak upon uh, uh they should speak uh, for a minimum of 1 minute uh, which will be indicated by the timer uh, with a green card and a maximum of Two minutes, which will be indicated with a red card. Also, thirty uh, seconds of grace period will be given to the speakers to speak. So, without any further delay, let's begin the meeting. Can uh, can any Toastmaster, either from the Vasco or the Anifon Toastmasters Club, 
would like to volunteer for the first table topic. Toastmaster Swayam, you are a royal. If they don't volunteer, you can go and pick your kill. Okay, sure. Uh, for the first table topic, I would like to call upon uh, Toastmaster Toastmaster Abrar Sayyad. Toastmaster Abrar. Hi, sir. So your topic, no. uh, your topic is how would you describe freedom in your own words? I repeat, how would you describe freedom in your own words? Abrar, before you begin, can we do a check of your audio? Abrar, you seem to be having an issue with your audio. Okay, uh, uh, table, table topic master Abrar seems to be having an issue with his audio. Can we move on to the next participant? We can try him later on at the end. Uh, I would like to call upon uh, Shrav. Vani Gurav uh, for the next uh, table talk. Master Shravani. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Uh, your topic is how would you describe freedom in your own words? So when the word freedom, uh, when you spoke the word freedom, the only thing came to my mind was the freedom which we got from Britishers. If we describe, if I want to describe freedom in my own words, I would say freedom to express my own views. That can be a kind of freedom where I'm allowed to express my views and people will accept and understand it. Even if I'm wrong, they will listen to it and explain it to me why I'm wrong or, or make me understand the logic behind it. So one way of describing freedom can be freedom of speech. Other is freedom of actions, where I'm allowed to choose what I want to do. And I'm not forced by others about their wishes. I mean, for example, my parents should not try to force their ambitions or their expectations on me. I should be able to decide what is right for me and I should be able to uh, act, upon the, act upon my way of thinking. Any other way, uh, if I want to describe uh, freedom will be Yeah, that's what came into my mind. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster uh, Shravani. That were, your words were very re relatable. Moving on. For the next table topic, I, I would like to call upon Toastmaster Manish. Toastmaster Manish. Good evening. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Your topic is what have you done last year that you are the most proud of? I repeat, what have you done last year that you are most proud of? Okay. A tough uh, one. Last year was a year of challenge, as all of us know. It was not only self-created, but there was a pandemic. And challenges beginning from uh, health to remain or to survive, from there up to ensuring all the responsibilities are met. And when I'm saying responsibilities, it is not only family responsibility 
or the responsibility that you have to the organization or the place you work, but also the social responsibility. So when I look back, I I am proud that because of me, there was nothing that uh, uh, went into an hurdle. And when I'm saying this, we we had a lot of challenges when it came to our company, and also had challenges at home because to begin with. at the beginning my wife and kid were outside goa bringing them to goa itself was a challenge surviving that one and a half month at home alone was a challenge and i am proud i could do it uh, without without much of a trouble without troubling anybody so i feel last year i can take pride in in being being alive the big, biggest thing because if i was irresponsible i could have landed it in, in problems considering that i would say that uh, I, i did a stately act when it came to remaining alive and surviving the pandemic and ensuring that i didn't put others into trouble that's it for mine thank you thank you toch master manish we are all proud of you moving on for the next table topic I will like to call upon Toastmaster Swayam. We have yes. Toastmaster Larina that has volunteered to take a table topic. Okay. Toastmaster Larina. Yes. The topic is: What's the most important investment in life, according to you? I repeat. the most important investment in life according to you okay uh, for me the most important investment is on health earlier when we were small in school we used we used to have um, sports activities and all and so it was compulsory and we used to take care but as we grow up and uh, we get married and engage in our own works like we tend to forget about everything and our whole attention is on kids and everything the household thing and then we realize it when our health is not good and that is the time we realize we have to what is really important for us like even if you have money like then you don't take care of your health it's of no use so i think even if it is you have to invest something or you have to spend on something the most uh, important thing is you have to invest on your health anything like you have to do workouts you have to go in a gym or you have to exercise for yourself or you have to take medicines like uh multivitamins anything so take it spend on that because at least when you start taking care of yourself from the start you know your health is good so for me and you enjoy your life to the fullest so for me the total investment is you i have to spend on my health that's all Great job, Toastmaster. Toastmaster Larina. Moving on. Uh, for the next table topic, I would like to call a guest. A uh, guest, Bryce. Uh, Toastmaster Bryce, kindly unmute. Yes, sure. Your topic is one of your responsibilities. Do you wish to? Uh, we do you wish you could get rid of i repeat which one of your responsibilities you wish you could get rid of okay okay uh, good evening fellow toastmasters and guests one of the responsibilities that i wish i could get rid of would be uh, uh, yeah it would be at um, Uh, right now at home because obviously i am the i am the, uh, the eldest sibling in the family i am the eldest in the family so uh, you know 
uh, uh, like it uh, and in the house i have uh, like i mean i have to see to my grandmother and like you know and uh, whatever issues she has with regards to like i like she always calls me for you know for help with regards to the phone then um, then if at all there is any uh, th- any uh, any uh, anything that needs to be ordered when it comes to the food items you know uh, or you could say like uh, like online and also i am in charge of that and uh, and um, anything uh, anything that has got to do with the house so like basically like uh, if you go to see that like uh, like since i'm the eldest sibling i've got the most responsibility so maybe uh, maybe if i could have uh, got gotten rid of that that could have that could be that could be I- I- actually ideal so that could be the responsibility that i would get rid of over to you toastmaster swayam thank you toastmaster brights okay moving on next table topic uh, i would like to call upon toastmaster gopal master gopal yeah am i audible yes yes you are audible thank you your topic is what what are the primary components to a happy life i repeat what are the primary components to a happy life okay uh, good evening to the fellow toastmasters and guests uh, what are the components for a healthy life you know it's a very difficult question you know uh, the reason for that is different people have different ways of expressing the happiness now for me being healthy and being well being these are the two important components for a happy life so because we have to make a balance between these two let's see uh, you have a healthy life you no know, uh, and you don't have the money with you then it is going to be imbalance it's of no use whereas if you if you invest so much if your ta- if your time and if your effort if you put so much in earning and if you compromise on your health then that is going to be another imbalance because at the end of the day you will have the money but you will not have the health so how do you make the you know fine balance of between these two depends on the success now let me tell you it is not that easy because in our day life day to day priorities if we if you are uh, you know in the phase of in earning money probably we compromise on our health unconsciously or unconsciously so you know what i do is kind of you know five days i keep my priority for my work and the two days especially during the weekend i give a lot of priority for my health and my every day starts with an exercise so because these are the one or two hours which we give in we should give importance to our body we should listen to our body if you take care of your health for at least 2 to 3 hours in a day i think you can manage both the things your health and wealth being taken care and you will be a happy person at the end thanks for giving me this opportunity thank you to toastmaster gopal before moving on i would like to ask the timer if uh, uh, how many table topics can we do So I am can take two more. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Wong. Okay, for the next table topic, I would like to call upon Toastmaster Amit. Toastmaster Amit. Hi, Swam. Hi. Your topic, your topic is, what's your biggest phobia? I repeat, what's your biggest phobia? uh hello everyone mm. i'm not sure if i'm visible yeah am i audible guys yes toastmaster thank you okay so uh, should i start this is my first time so uh, bear with me okay uh so yeah my biggest phobia is uh, uh getting on a stage and that's why uh, i am here with the toastmasters club uh to come out of that phobia 
uh, it has been a biggest challenge for me because uh, it has become a hurdle uh, wherein because it happens like uh, as you grow in your career or wherever you are you have to go in your leadership roles and uh, this has posed a, uh, posed multiple challenges for me and uh, because of which uh, i couldn't reach my set goals okay so my, i am taking this opportunity to come out of this phobia i am trying to face my challenges and uh, yeah looking forward to improve upon it as well so yeah uh, basically that's it from my side thank you toast master amit i hope your phobia is killed soon with the help of uh, of toast master thank you but for the last table topic i will uh, like to call upon um uh, uh okay for the last table topic i would like to call upon uh Okay, to uh, Toastmaster Nigel, can you unmute yourself? Sure thing. So I am go for it. Okay, your topic is: Would you rather be the only happy person in the whole world, or you would you would be the only sad person in the whole world? I repeat: Would you rather be the only happy person in the whole world? or the only sad person in the whole world thank you toast master of the day uh, table topic master toast master swayam uh, good evening everyone i would of course choose happiness over sadness i think that is an essence or a feeling that all of us ascribe to be as human beings we are born with a desire to be happy and we create and curate our lives around every single thing that makes us happy right from the smartphones that we use to the apps that we install to the number of times we open our phones to the foods that we have to the meetings that we go to like toastmaster meetings all of us choose to do things that eventually whether in the present or in the future increase our level of happiness however in order to appreciate happiness you also need to appreciate and experience sadness because if you have not experienced both extremes you will not know as a person what it is to be happy versus what it is to be sad i mean take for example if you were always a winner at an international speech contest you would not really put in the effort and the pains that go through preparing for a contest and that is true for every other aspect of your life so in short i would choose happiness every single time but of course once in a while you need to be vaccinated by sadness to understand the value of happiness the stately value of happiness thank you over to you table topic master thank you to oshmaster nayer it was a great learning from you uh, with this we end the session it was a very sublime session this being my first time it was a first time taking up this role it was a great experience thank you over to you oshmaster of pedi tanvi thank you so much table topics master toastmaster swaya it gives me immense pleasure to see that we have so many noble people in our toast masters i'm so glad that i chose this theme today even though it's my first time being the tmod for today's club i hope that you will overlook the small mistakes that i made as a very noble as a being very noble of you and uh, it it gives me pleasure to see that even though we don't have ideas that are very very much in congruency we almost have similar ideas someone wants to be powerful someone wants to be courageous someone wants to be kind and someone wants to be diplomatic but at the end of the day 
I'm really happy to see that everyone of us wants to be a good person. And with that, I would like to hand over the baton to uh, the ruler of integrity. I will love, I would love to give this responsibility to you. And I hope you, I hope you have a good time giving off your services through the excellence of your evaluation. Over to General Evaluator, TM Colin. Thank you for that. Uh, as far as possible, I'm going to keep the titles given by Queen Tanvi the second. Queen Tanvi the first is Tanvi Chanikar. <laughs> so as far as possible, let's try to keep those titles. Okay, so it matches with the, you know what no, when you say the second. Okay. So let's move on. Let's start with the uh, uh, general evaluation session. In this session, I have Again, three parts to look after. The first part is where I call the speaker speech evaluators to give their evaluation of today's prepared speech section. And then I will have the role players for today who will come and give their report. And finally, you'll have the blast from me. So I think uh, we can look forward to having everybody getting something to take back. Right, where is, okay, yes. Okay, so for today's session, the first speaker was Toastmaster Anthony, the Frenchman. Okay. And uh, he was evaluated by Toastmaster Ragunada. I saw DTM Raguna, or Distinguished Toastmaster Raguna. So I would request uh, Distinguished Toastmaster Raghu Nadar to evaluate Toastmaster Anthony's speech. Vasudeva Kutumbikam, we are all one family, aren't we? As Thomas Madden said, we are already one, but we imagine we are not. And what we have to recover is our original unity. And what we have to be is what we are. The borders are barriers that we are created both physically or mentally. I realized this when I attended one of the clubs in Pakistan. I'm sure having bilingual clubs and the foreign language Toastmaster Club India will unite us and bring this, the theme that was never could have become back in our lives. Dear General Evaluator, fellow Toastmaster and Toastmaster Anthony in particular, I will evaluate Toastmaster Anthony's speech in CRC approach, commendation, recommendations, and summary with a challenge. Coming to commendations, Toastmaster Anthony has ensured to be poised in the entire interview and have given effective answers. This is a great job done. Second, from giving importance to a French club and also why he is qualified to become the president, he has answered each and every question with that calmness and very patient. There were some bouncer questions, which perhaps any other person, even me, I would have gone bonkers. For example, when Toastmaster Nigel asked about the importance of Mona Lisa, what did it make any sense to this topic? But though it was off topic, Toastmaster Anthony has ensured to be patient and has calmly answered it and link back to Toastmasters. What a wonderful way of answering it. The job greatly done. Coming to recommendations, Toastmaster Anthony, I have only one recommendation for today. I believe you could have been a little more confident and less conscious of audience. And I'm sure you would have not given those counters to our counter of the day. For example, I've seen you using, you know the word heavily. A little more preparation would have helped you to improve in that section. Other than that, I believe you are man of the hour and real His Highness and the president of the French club. To summarize, a great attempt at project, great body language, eye contact and body language. You can do better by overcoming that discomfort for impromptu speech. I wish you all the best for your future speeches or to general evaluator. Thank you for that, uh, uh, distinguished Toastmaster Raghunanda. 
Uh, the next uh, speaker for today was uh, Toastmaster Tattu. Ah, yes. Distinguished Toastmaster again, Raymond, all the way from Kuwait. So his evaluator was uh, Toastmaster Meenal. Toastmaster Meenal, nice to see you back. I have not met you on a Toastmaster platform. So after your comeback, brother. So uh, nice to see you back and uh, Toastmaster Meenal, over to you to evaluate uh, distinguished Toastmaster Raymond's speech. Thank you, General Evaluator. My dear speaker, distinguished Toastmaster Raymond, today when you presented your speech for a very fraction of a second, I was wondering what made you gain the title of a distinguished Toastmaster. And right from the moment you started to the moment you kept us engaged throughout, it showed in your speech. The fluency, the grace, the vivaciousness that you brought into just through your voice. And rightly so, for the pathways that you've chosen, every statement had a tinge of humor delivered with a poker face. And I personally feel that's very rare to find. In fact, there's a very less known philosopher who said that humor is not a mood, but a way of looking at life. And today I could hear it in your smile. I could hear it in your smile. And I could hear it, feel it in your voice every single time you made a recollection of when you have been compared. And trust me, it did throw up a wave of nostalgia for being in that situation in the past. And I was enthralled by your speech. The stately way in which you described the situations was in fact, you, you had perfect pace of the entire speech, very well crafted. You had a clear voice, a good tonality, volume, pitch, which meets with majority of the criteria for the speech. And the vocal variety was bang on. Every word that you wanted your audience to react on had a stressor, had an emphasis on it. And the best part that I loved is that you made it into a conversational style narrative, which is creating a persona of having your mom in the room. And it's, it's like you're just having a conversation, but at the same time, along with your mom, you're having a conversation with the rest of us as well. However, if I were to give you a slight recommendation, because not because I must, but because that's something that I found could maybe help improve the speech a little more, was once you've set the tone for the entire speech, it's, it's more like a relevance to be like Bill. And every single time you iterated that, that very tone rang a bell, be like Raju, be like Raju. But in the end, there was this one part where, where you mentioned that your mom said, you are not like Raju or don't be like Raju. That one very tiny section where you could have maybe used more emphasis in terms of using a hand gesture, maybe something like this or something that would emphasize the beautiful hand gestures and the complemented the vocal variety that you had would have made a little more impact to the overall flawlessly and stately speech that you've given. I think I would conclude by saying that I'm glad you are not like Raju because then we wouldn't have had the opportunity of listening to such a wonderful speech. I wish you all the best and thank you for that entertaining and informative, very well delivered speech today. Over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Meena. Now that we have finished the two speech evaluations, I would like to call for the voting for the best evaluator. So could I request the Zoom master to kindly launch the poll for the best evaluator? Yes, I'm sorry, I missed out on that. Uh, can I call for the timing first? Uh, can I ask the timer if both the evaluators have qualified? 
yes, general evaluator. Both okay. the evaluators okay. are qualified. Thanks, Nigel, for that message. Yeah, please vote again. Could I ask the timer if all the table topic speakers have qualified? Uh, except for Amit, everyone else is qualified. I'll just okay. repeat all the names. Please tell me if I've missed out. Toastmaster Shravani, Toastmaster Manish, Toastmaster Lerina, Toastmaster Bryce, Toastmaster Gopal, and Toastmaster Nigel. Could I request the Zoom master to launch a poll if it's ready? Yes, it's done. All right. Done. So let's move forward. We've got one of the most important parts. We've done one important part. Now we come to the next important part, which is a very crucial part of evaluations in Toastmasters. And that is the role players for today. We've had three role players whom uh, Queen Tanvi too has given titles. And I'd like to keep to those titles written them down somewhere. Ah, the timer, who has all the power over time, as she said. Uh, the ninja queen. Can I invite Toastmaster Shivani? Toastmaster Shivani, your evaluation of our time. Yes. Thank you, General Evaluator. We are perfectly on time for today's meeting. The meeting also started off nine. First speaker, Toastmaster Anthony, spoke for 7 minutes 20 seconds. Toastmaster Raymond spoke for 7 minutes 2 seconds. The education system went on for around 11 minutes. For table topics, they, uh, Toastmaster Shravani spoke for 1 minute 13 seconds. Toastmaster Manish spoke for 2 minutes 4 seconds. Toastmaster Lerina spoke for 1 minute 40 seconds. Toastmaster Bryce spoke for 1 minute 20 seconds. Toastmaster Gopal spoke for 2 minutes 2 seconds. Toastmaster Guest Amit spoke for 40, uh, 57 seconds. Toastmaster Nigel spoke for 1 minute and 49 seconds. Our evaluators, DPM Raghunada, spoke for 2 minutes 33 seconds. And Toastmaster Meena spoke for 3 minutes and 23 seconds. That's it from my side. Over to you, Ramadhi Valley. Thank you, uh, timer for today. Uh, the next role player was, uh, I got this, the hearer is it? Who hears the speaker's language? Yes, yes, that's correct. Toastmaster Usha, can we hear what she heard from the speaker's language? Toastmaster Usha, over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster General. Thank you, General Evaluator. Uh, I'll be taking leave from those people whom I could find something. So I'll begin with Toastmaster Anthony. He spoke 12 times up, and the repetitive phrases he has taken you spoken were when you, when you, for, for, to you, it became, it became. Uh, I think uh, Toastmaster Usha is having a little bit of a problem with the audio. Maybe we can go to uh, Toastmaster. I, I think she's back. She's back? Uh, I'm able? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, continue. So, 
uh, I'll continue with Toastmaster Nigel. He spoke five times. Uh, and Toastmaster Swayam, he spoke ten times. Uh, Toastmaster Shan, she took two times. Uh, Toastmaster Manish, two times. Uh, and phrases he have uh, spoken where uh, without, without it being in the in the in the, in the and Toastmaster Larina, she spoke two times a, uh, and our guest four times a, uh, and phrases then then like like and 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 Toastmaster Amit, he spoke five times a. Uh. Thank you. Over to you, Toast General Evaluator. So we have finally the last, the seeker of the who's and us. The seeker of the who's and us today, the role of grammarian, Toastmaster Jayanti. Thank you, uh, General Evaluator. Toastmaster Tanvi used a very good phrase darkest odor are masked by the most fragrant perfumes. Toastmaster Anthony. You had a few pauses with the phrase, you know. But this being in an interview format, I don't think the traditional tempo of speech would have worked. So it's not really, it's me nitpicking here. You used a really nice phrase, uh, a really nice uh, quotation. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Also, another quote you used was, one must keep working and do what one does. And one will see the fruits of fruits in time to come. The good word used was exceptionally. Toastmaster Nigel, the outstanding words used were intrigued and stature. Toast, uh, DTM Raymond, at one point you used the phrase, she's like, instead perhaps saying she said would have been better. But again, since this was more of a conversational tone that you had taken. I really cannot pinpoint that this was a mistake. Some good words used were distinguished, cyclonic, nagging. Toastmaster Swayam, there were a few mispronunciations such as develop, important. The good words used were sublime, impromptu. Toastmaster Shavani, instead of saying means, Try and use meaning. A good phrase used by you was freedom of actions. Toastmaster Manish, instead of saying when I'm saying, try and use as I say this. The good words used here were ensuring and hurdle. Toastmaster Larina, good word used was fullest. Toastmaster Bryce, you know was again used quite a few times. Perhaps try to lose that habit. Good word used was ideal. Toastmaster Gopal. Phrase you know was used one too many times. Good word used was compromise. Toastmaster Amit used a good word hurdle. Toastmaster Nigel. Curate eventually and the phrase vaccinated with sadness made an impact. DTM Raghunada, few mis mispronunciations such as uh, the word barriers. Good word used was overcoming. Toastmaster Menil, instead of saying very fraction of a second, perhaps lose the very in it, just fraction of second would have sufficed. Good words used here were many, vivaciousness, tinge, poker face, enthralled, tonality, emphasis, persona, iterated. And the good word, phrase we used was hear it in your smile, very innovative. Toastmasters who use the word of the day were Toastmaster Manish, Toastmaster Menil, Toastmaster Nigel, a good attempt, but I'm not counting chats. So, <laughs> losing that. Back to you, uh, DTM Collins. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I think we have, uh, we are done with uh, the role players. And now I wouldn't call them minor role players and major role players. I will call them role players of the first set and role players who came in the next part. So 
role players who have done uh, a group that is the toastmaster of the day uh, the general evaluator and the table topics master uh, the three of them we will have one voting session which i would request the zoom master to or we can do it at the end of the session it's better we do it at the end of the session so let me start with the evaluation for today's meeting overall i felt the agenda came out well in time and uh, lots of things have changed uh, from a long time ago and we have improved a lot in that probably we would have an agenda one day or even maybe on the day of the meeting but now it came in at least i think three or four days in advance congratulations to both the vice president of education Toastmaster Tanvi and Toastmaster Vishal and the excoms for bringing for doing this. It's very important that the agendas come out in time and we know what is going to happen. It prepares well, so I would like to commend that. We started the meeting with Queen Tanvi the first. Right, so Tanvi Chanikar came in first as the Sergeant at Arms. For today, and uh, I liked what you did. Tanvi is connected, you know, all the this to the mission. We do into the mission. You connected that really well. Uh, presiding officer Anthony, yes, you have uh, you took over, and uh, I think you gave us good information about Toastmasters, and that is important, especially we have guests. the presiding officers do that and you know give information which is relevant to toastmasters and that is what toastmaster anthony did he also called on the guests we didn't have any guests but uh, he still called on to the zoom master to enquire if we have guests again very important it's important to clarify it toastmaster of the day tanvi the second well uh, i think uh, i must commend what she has done i mean i have uh, i just got a message from her a day or two ago but i will speak from my experience what i wrote on that message back to her and what she actually presented today was the same but very very creative whatever i have said she's put into it but given it a creative twist i can speak to what i i have witnessed and it was a really really encouraging thing for me i said okay we've got a very good toastmaster coming up and attempting to do things taking up the role of toastmaster of the day is not easy and she has done a fantastic job i like the way he started uh, toastmaster tanvi you got everybody to participate you asked something and were waiting for responses well that is a nice thing to do normally a toastmaster doesn't do that but before that you caught everybody's attention by actually singing some relevant to the team so that was a good initiative and i i really uh, say that you say you had courage you sang without the music you sang it just without anything it was like an a cappella you just sang it okay no music nothing okay and it takes courage to do that and you did it that that is something i really want to appreciate uh everything was very creatively done so only one thing i'd like to say is uh we really may not need to say sorry for too much so don't worry about sorry move on with what we are what we are doing maybe you can just mention that something happened and move on Really, a sorry is not required. That is what I felt. Uh, but again, uh, the the designations you gave everyone, the titles you gave everybody, uh, that is befitting uh, of a queen. You gave everybody the title. The timer, the ninja queen. Very creatively introduced your role. You were very precise in explaining everything, and. your evaluation also was very precise i like the all the three role players i'll come to you one by one but i think you all took your time 
to explain everything and that's what the timer did she took her time to explain every role every timing everybody who what timing they took and that is important especially for the speakers because it will help us in the hearing of the speaker's language postmaster usha i like the way you described your role very clear very precise and you also gave examples so that was a very good job even your report was very detailed and good uh, the seeker of who's and ours you really went seeking the who's and ours you really went into depth and a very very uh, good word of the day stately yes unfortunately i myself didn't use it but uh, i i think uh, the cleverest among everybody or trying to be clever was nigel put it into chat <laughs> it should have been counted yes it was a good uh, good way to do it also anyway that's that's uh, besides the point but uh, i think uh, last time i saw you doing the grammarian role this time i'm uh, sorry last time i saw you doing the r counter role it was very detailed this time i've seen you die, doing the grammarian role you've kept the tempo it's the, it's again very detailed you mentioned what each one had to do i mean what each one has done and what you liked about each thing that was done you also spoke about the mistakes or uh, grammatical errors which were created which was spoken only thing i would suggest in that is i would uh, normally we don't say the name of the speaker so you could say this was mispronounced it should have been this you don't have to say who said it it's just a way of encouraging because normally that uh, some uh, some uh, some people feel very conscious when their name is called as a mistake here i guess nobody would but just for the future maybe you could uh, do that but overall you kept up to the tempo as i said last time you really did a good job this time um uh, the word of the day very well chosen it was a stately meeting it was about royals and when you say royals stately is a very good word so uh, that was a nice word to choose uh postmaster raghunan uh, raghunada uh i think i uh, one thing i'd like to mention about the way he evaluated he brought in something which the uh, our counter should have actually brought in that is you know but he did it so well that he didn't take the thunder away from the our counter he just mentioned one thing and he told he made a mention of it so otherwise normally we have seen the everything which is mentioned because that is taking away the thunder of what the our counter should have actually mentioned so it was very nicely done those master meenal excellent evaluation this time and i think i'm i don't have much to say about it it was very well done uh those must have swam again there was a slight change in everything this time we had a little more serious table topics and i think it's nice it's nice for a change something more serious even the questions more serious we got more information from the questions that were asked So we normally have fun yes it's good to have fun but in seriousness also there is a lot of fun so it's it was nice to have a few serious questions also uh i think about the uh, uh, the session which was conducted on uh, excom roles very good session by postmaster anthony all the information given postmaster nigel came up with the rest and uh, Uh, i think another thing which uh, the uh, experience for the excom role could do is go on to the toastmasters website and check out for uh, the club officers handbook which describes the roles in detail so whatever toastmaster anthony has given you in addition to that another good resource is the club officers handbook which describes everything in detail uh, with that i think i have covered everybody anybody is not been covered i don't think so i think i've covered everybody 
we've had a stately meeting we've had the royals in here i know uh, toastmaster jenti uh, is not counting but i'm still going to use it now so we had all the royals in here we had the queen who gave all the titles and i hope nobody is going to be doing a prince harry and meghan here nobody leaving the meeting so all the best and let's move ahead looking forward to the next meeting over to the presiding officer thank you so much dtm colin for that general evaluation now quickly let us move into voting for the minor role players and the major role players 30 seconds on the clock thank you toastmaster anthony uh, so that with that we are almost close to the end of our toastmasters meeting our joint toastmasters meeting between anafont and vasco toastmasters club looking back at this meeting i really wish we had a few more meetings like this i felt that it was a great deal of fun a great essence of quality in the entire meeting especially from the speakers and uh, the evaluators and uh, it was a value add for everybody that participated in this meeting uh, toastmaster tanvi when you are ready with your certificates please let me know in the meantime we've had a few guest toastmasters are they still there in the room uh, nigel the certificates are ready perfect perfect okay i think toastmaster price has dropped off okay uh we shall now move forward with presentation of the awards uh those must then we a second then we will you be sharing your screen okay okay i uh, just hold on yeah perfect so first up we have the best speaker award the best speaker award very closely contested goes to toastmaster anthony gomes congratulations toastmaster anthony well delivered interview thank you uh, you know you gave a lot of credit i mean a lot of uh, reverence in a way to the mona lisa uh, just shows how french you are in your blood at the same time how goan you are uh, next up we have the award for the best table topic master table topic speaker that goes to <laughs> toastmaster gomes there are two gomes <laughs> yes <laughs> so the gomes have taken away two of the awards today uh if i can heckle you a little bit and we have signed the certificates <laughs> now you know how we've actually got the certificates i thought uh, uh, colin right. was taking the bribes <laughs> this is weird <laughs> they didn't pay me enough <laughs> anyway moving on to the next award the next award is for best evaluator the best evaluator that goes to again two perfect amazing evaluations today but we have one winner and that is toastmaster meenal pale toastmaster meenal really really well put together evaluation i really loved it from start till the end uh, of course dtm raghu's evaluation was really amazing as well next moving on to the next award is for the best minor role player that goes to toastmaster jayanti singh Toastmaster Jayanti, congratulations! I bribed well. A very stately performance. I don't know if you are still calculating, uh, if you are still counting. Very stately performance. 
the next up we have the role for the best major role player and that is toastmaster tanvi nayar congratulations your highness toastmaster tanvi oh you my god thank you so much <laughs> excellent job i love the fact that you had so much of preparation that went into the entire toastmaster of the day a role and it really showed through the entirety of the meeting thank you and thank you sir that, yes and that concludes the awards for today uh before we leave uh to those of you that are still here the basco toastmasters club meeting the next meeting is happening on the 4th of june is that correct president anthony and the anafon toastmasters club meeting is going to happen soon as well i shall let you know in the members group uh, as soon as it happens uh, as it as soon as it's going to happen not as it happens with that i officially bring this meeting to a close thank you president anthony and your entire team and your club for uh, joining hands with uh, anafon toastmasters club this has been a fantastic evening uh, and looking forward to many more such uh, meetings in the future as well thank you and we can yeah, stop let's the have a photo